Okay guys, we're going to try and, I'm going to try to explain this on how I arrived uh, at the size of wire and also the overcurrent protection device. Now this uh, is Article 430 of the National Electric Code and um, it is um, kind of confusing a little bit. So, uh, you know, if you're in the Canada or the UK, I know your rules are different and if I was over there, I'd abide by your rules, but I'm not there. This is what I go by, the National Electric Code, and these are minimum requirements, okay? Now, you can always exceed the National Electric Code, but you can't go below the minimum requirements. That's why we have a code, okay? You have to have a ref reference point. The, the National Electric Code is not a design manual, so we got some wind out here. Okay. Um, I would love to show you guys in the book, but I don't want to get popped for copyright infringement. So what I've done is you can look in the book yourself. Go to um, article, you can go to table 430.248 of the latest edition of the National Electric Code book. And I've kind of written this down a little bit here. But we know we have a five horsepower motor. We know it's single phase. And we know it says 230 volts. And we don't go by that nameplate rating nameplate said 23 that does not apply to these motors here if you're going to do it to this code uh, if you're a if you're a jack leg or you know you're some uh, wannabe electrician then yeah okay fine uh, uh, y'all have a different set of rules than I, I'm governed by but um, we go to this table it says 28 amps that's what you have to size the conductor or the wire to and that's the full load current and to find the size of the conductor we multiply the full load current, which is 28, by 125 percent, and that gives us exactly 35 amps. So our wire has to be rated for a minimum of 35 amps. If you want to run some, you know, 4 aught cable over there, uh, you know, the National Electric Code is not going to have a problem with that. You can always exceed. This is the minimum requirements. Okay, I can't stress that enough. Okay, if you go, so how how do we figure what size wire we need? Well. If you go in the National Electric Code Book, 310.15b16, you'll see a table in here. It'll have copper on one side and it'll have aluminum on the other. Now, I'm not going to use aluminum, so I just X that out. And you're not protecting the wire, you're protecting the insulation on the wire. I know, I know it doesn't make any sense, but really that's what you're protecting because the wire is going to take a whole lot more amperage than these tables have right here. And we go by the temperature rating that the insulation is on the wire. So um, I'm going to be using THHN which is that's uh, what I'm using right there and that gives me the highest insulation value and if we look down here we need 35 amps and it says we can use this type of wire or we can use this type so and number 10 you want to go number eight or number six hey that's fine knock yourselves out but I'm doing the minimum requirements okay so I'm going to be using this now I know a lot of people who jerk Romex are going to have a problem and say you can't you know put 40 amps on number 10 wire and that is true in a residential situation with Romex okay I'm not dealing with that all right um, also you have to derate the conductor according to the ambient temperature so if you go to this table right here 310.15 B2A you'll see a table of ambient temperatures and we're in the 90 degree column and you know if our temperature around here is this then we don't derate the wire so let's just say our ambient temperature around here is 96 to 104 now this is outside and I'm in uh, Florida and it never gets I think the highest temperature we've ever had here was 99 degrees in 1985 so I'm in this range right here. So if we multiply, we're in the 90 degree column, 91 times the 40 amp, 40 amps times the 91 in this temperature range, that says that wire can handle 36.4 degrees Celsius. Now, if you're, you know, somewhere where, you know, like Death Valley, and you're running this, this is going to be your ambient temperature range. And you're going to take that multiplier, and you'll multiply that by the 40, and that gives you 28.4, which does not, you, you'd have to bump the wire size up. So, you'd have to move up to a number 8 or number 6. So, anyway, I hope that's not too confusing, but that's the way it works. So, 
a number 10 at this temperature is going to work. Now, another thing, this darn wind, is we are limited by the breaker. I think I showed you all the breaker is only rated, the terminals are rated for 75 degrees Celsius. Which if we go back over here, even though we're using this wire, we can use it to calculate the ambient temperature variations, but we can never go above this right here. We can never put more than 35 amps on it. So, so we are maxed out. So I know that's confusing, okay? So just, just for say that we can use number 10, THHN, but we have to go by this rating. So if your if you're full load amps was like 40, and you had no correction factors, and you put it on that breaker, that breaker drops it down to 35 because the terminal is only rated at 75 degrees. And it's like a link in a chain. You have to go by the weakest link in the chain. And when you run an electrical circuit, the weakest link in the chain are the terminals at the breaker. So I hope that's clear. If it's not, you know, I'm open for questions. Okay. Now, how do we get to a 70 amp breaker? All right, we go to this table right here, 43052. We have the conductor has to be rated for 35 amps, but the full load current is what we use. It's what we found out over here. That's our full load current according to that table. And we come back over here and we multiply that by 250%. Now, if you're using a, a non time delay fuse, you multiply that by 300. If you're using a dual element fuse, it's 175%. Instantaneous trip breaker, you multiply that by 8. But here we're using an inverse time breaker, and we're going to multiply that 250% times 28 amps, and that comes out to 70 amps over current protection device. So, um, I know a lot of people, they get a 5 horsepower compressor, they read the nameplate, it says 20, 23 amps, and they put a 30 amp breaker on it. And it will work, but if you're going to have it inspected, or if you want uh, it to have a long service life, uh, then you need to put that 70 amp breaker on there, or you need to use one of these fuses. And this is NEC all the way. Okay, well, like I said, guys, it, uh, motors are very confusing, even to people who are going to be taking their journeyman's test or their master electrons test, they, they put this stuff on there and a lot of people, they can't handle that. So, all right, well, I hope this was somewhat informative. Homestead Prepper out.